we are given number of books read by 60 students in a month. Now, whenever we have raw data, especially a large amount of data, it becomes very difficult to make any analysis out of it or to find out any important information. For example, if we want to know the number of students who read more than, let's say, 35 books, we have to scan a long list and it is very tedious. So, we try to organize this data into groups called classes and count how many values lie in each group. This count is called frequency. Such an organization of the data into groups is called frequency distribution table or grouped frequency distribution table. And it looks something like this. This entire data set has been arranged into these groups, which are also called classes, right? Now, if we talk about this first group, it has number of students who read books from 1 to 5 range. That is 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 books. And if we look at this table, these are the students who read 1 to 5 books. If we count them, they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And therefore, the frequency here is 10. This is how we fill this entire table. Now, before we start learning how to create such a table, what are the things that we should look for before we start creating this table? Let us look at some basic terms. Let's put it to one side. Now, each group is called class or class interval. Here the class intervals are 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 36 to 14, so on. In each of these class intervals, the lowest value is called lower limit and the highest value is called upper limit. And the class size or class width is the length of the class, which in this case is 5. Right. Now we can choose this class width. It's completely up to us and accordingly these class intervals will change. For example, for the same data which we arranged like this, it can also be arranged like this. Now over here the class width or the class size is 10. And when we arrange it according to this class width, we have only 4 classes. And we have shifted our frequency accordingly. We had 20 students who read books from 1 to 10 range. So, we put 20 over here. We can choose the class width to be 15 or 16 or whatever we want. Now, let us see how we will create this table, frequency distribution table from scratch. Let us start with a fresh data set. We have been given the ages of 30 people at a health camp. The very first thing that we do is find the range of the data. Range of the data is given by maximum value minus minimum value. Here the maximum value is 92 and the minimum is 18. So range is 92 minus 18 which is 74. Then we we'll determine the number of classes and that is completely up to us. We can choose to have 6, 7, 8 whatever classes we want. Let's take 7 over here. Then we will calculate the class width. It is given by range divided by number of classes. 74 divided by 7, that will be 10 point something, so approximately 11. Now, let us create a table. We will have three columns, class interval, tally marks, and then frequency. Now, since the minimum value over here is 18, and our class width is 11, so we will start from 18, count 11, and that will become our first class. So, it is 18 to 28. The next class interval would be 29 to 39. Once again, the class width here is 11. The class width will stay consistent. Next class interval would be 40 to 50. Similarly, we can create all the class intervals. We'll have 51 to 61, 62 to 72 and so on. Now, let us move to the second column. In order to fill this, let's start with each of the data set one by one. Each of the data points one by one. So we have 18. 18 will go to this class interval. So let us put one tally mark over here. Then we have 20. Once again, this will go to the first class interval. Another mark. 60. 60 will go to this one. 51 to 61. 45 will go to this one. 40 to 50. 
27 will go over here once again. 30 will go to the second class interval. 50 will go to the third one. 70 will go to this one, 62 to 72. Similarly, 35 will go over here. 42 will go over here. 38 will go to the second class interval. 40 will go to the third class interval. 36 will go to second. 89 will go to the last class interval. 33 will go over here to the second class interval. So we'll mark the fifth tally mark like this. Now similarly for 47 and so another uh, all the data points we can fill the tally marks. Now comes the frequency. So for the first class interval we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The frequency is 5. This is also 5. 5, 4, 5, 3 and 3. You'll notice that the classes over here are known overlapping. No number is repeating in two classes. Such classes are called inclusive classes. Here, both lower and upper limits of a class belong to that class interval. Which means, if we have an observation which is 18, it will belong to this class. And if we have any observation in a data set which is 28, it will belong to this class interval only. But the catch is, what if we have a data value like 28.5? In which class interval will we include it? This one or this one? In such cases, what we do is we construct real limits or boundaries for every class. Now, how do we do that is we find out the average of upper limit of that class and lower limit of next class. So, the average will be 28 plus 29 divided by 2 which is 28.5. Now, this becomes the upper boundary of this class and lower boundary of next class as well. So, we'll continue like this. Similarly, for next class, we'll find out the average of 39 and 40, which will be 39.5. So, its upper boundary is 39.5. The lower boundary of next class will also be 39.5. We'll continue like this. This will be 50.5. Then we have 50.5 to 61.5 and so on. Now, for the lower boundary of the first class and the upper boundary of the last class. We just assume one class interval before this, which will have its upper limit as 17. So, average of 17 and 18 would be 17.5. Similarly, the upper, uh, the lower limit of this next class, if there was a next class, would have been 95. So, the average of 94 and 95 would be 94.5. And that's how we find out these real limits or boundaries. Now, accordingly, we can fill in the rest of the table, the tailing marks and the frequency, looking at the data, just like how we did last time. Right. You'll also notice that now these classes are continuous classes. Right. While these were discrete classes. These classes are non-overlapping and also called exclusive classes. But there's still a problem over here. What should we do in case there is an observation 28.5 in the data set? Should go to this class or this class? By convention, it always goes to the higher class interval. So, 28.5 would go to this class interval. Similarly, if we have a data point which is 72.5, it should go to this one or this one? It will go in the higher class interval, that is this one. 72.5 to 83.5. For exclusive classes, only lower limit of a particular class belongs to that class, but not its upper limit. And therefore, the name exclusive classes. Now, for these classes, the class size or class width can be given by upper boundary minus lower boundary. For example, the class size for the first class which we had, which was 18 to 28. Now, once we have find out its boundaries, the class size would be upper boundary minus lower boundary, 28.5 minus 17.5, which is 11. There's also one thing that we should note. Individual values of all observations cannot be identified from this table, right? But value of each observation of a particular class is assumed to be the average of upper and lower boundaries of that class. 
and this is called class mark or mid value this is used for for example when we'll start to learn how to calculate uh, the average or mean we'll be requiring this class mark over there it is calculated this, uh, like this it's the average of lower boundary and upper boundary so the class mark for this class will be 17.5 plus 28.5 divided by 2 which is 23 similarly we find out the class marks for all the class intervals and put it in a column and then we go on further on whatever um, measure of central tendency we have to calculate 